The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghadibiya Palace. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the Kingdom of Bahrain's successful hosting of the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue and noted the importance of His Royal Highness's keynote address at the summit, which included His Royal Highness's visions of regional and international security. The address underlined that lasting peace will only be secured when the Palestinian Palestinians are given their legitimate right to establish their independent state through a two-state solution and that the hopes and aspirations of the Palestinian people are at the heart of uh, governance after the crises in Gaza. The cabinet highlighted the vast international participation at the summit which reflects the international appreciation and recognition of the kingdom's initiatives and discussions that safeguard security and stability in light of reviewing the report submitted by the Minister of Foreign Affairs in this regard. The cabinet welcomed UN Security Council Resolution 2712 calling for an urgent and extended humanitarian pause that allows for the opening of safe corridors through the Gaza Strip as well as the provision of essential goods and services to civilians, particularly particularly children, the protection of humanitarian sites, and the release of hostages. The resolution also rejects the forced displacement of civilians and calls on all parties to adhere to international humanitarian law obligations. The cabinet called for fast-tracking the implementation of Resolution 2712 to end violence and alleviate the dire humanitarian situation. The cabinet then uh, congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness on the success of the Kingdom's hosting of the fifth edition of the Bahrain International Trophy. The cabinet emphasized that the broad participation of international stables and owners affirms the Kingdom's global position as a hub for horse racing and other international sports. The cabinet commended the efforts of Rashid Equestrian Horse Racing Club, led by the chairman of the Rashid Equestrian Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in successfully organizing the major international equestrian event, which has furthered the kingdom's reputation in hosting global horse racing events. The cabinet reviewed the outcomes of the meeting held between His Royal Highness and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Qatar, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman bin Jassim Al Thani. The meeting revolved around the Bahrain Qatar partnership and developments on the Bahrain-Qatar Causeway project. Both parties directed the concerned authorities to complete the necessary plans to initiate the implementation of the projects, furthering multi-sectoral collaborations. The cabinet expressed its gratitude to the kingdom's government entities and skilled national workforce working in the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Finance and National Economy, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Information, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, and all related authorities for successfully organizing regional and international events hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. The cabinet commended uh, the kingdom's successful hosting of Cityscape Bahrain 2023, Jewelry Arabia and Scent Arabia 2023, which reflect the kingdom's development of the real estate, commercial and tourism sectors. The cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance, including statistics reports regarding the events held at Exhibition World Bahrain, which saw broad participation. The cabinet reviewed a report submitted by the Interior Minister regarding security and organizational procedures for the events held at Exhibition World Bahrain. The cabinet concluded by extending its congratulations to the government and people of Oman on Oman's National Day, noting the development and prosperity of the country led by His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq. The cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding the Distinguished Government Employee Program, which aims to motivate customer service employees to greater excellence and creativity. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Community Services regarding the adoption of 2023-2027 National Strategy for Children. The strategy is based on four pillars, eight axes and 34 goals that will be implemented through 136 initiatives that promote programs and projects that provide protection and care for children. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decree ratifying the Charter of the Middle East Green Initiative. The initiative was launched by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as the first regional alliance of its kind aimed at mitigating the effects of climate change and promoting joint action to achieve global climate goals. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decision amending the provisions of decision regulating housing. 
The memo aims to restructure the standards related to the fifth category eligible for housing services and further outlines the mechanisms for calculating allowances for the monthly income standards. The move aims to expand the number of beneficiaries of housing services. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a number of memorandum of understandings and cooperation to be signed between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the UAE. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a decision to amend the schedule and the decision that designates tourism sites. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to a law proposal submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then noted the following ministerial reports. The outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the Global Media Congress 2023. The outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the MISC Global Forum 2023. National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa has stressed the importance of continuing to support Bahraini youth and invest in national competencies in achieving sustainability and exploring the future by strengthening supportive international partnerships to enrich educational and academic achievements. His Highness said that this will reflect positively on achieving the goals of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was speaking while meeting a group of students and researchers from the Yale Jackson Institute for Global Affairs at U.S.-based Yale University as part of their visit to Bahrain. He praised, His Highness praised the Yale Jackson Institute for Global Affairs and its educational outcomes, as well as the scientific and creative weights of its students, highlighting the importance of continuing to hold such mutual visits and meetings and constant communication between young people and academics from various countries as they are ambassadors and leaders of the future. His his Highness Sheikh Nasser referred to the steadily growing strategic Bahrain-U.S. partnership across various fields, resulting in the signing of a number of agreements and memorandums of cooperation. His Highness reviewed the Kingdom's support for various aspects of international and regional cooperation to establish the principle of just and comprehensive peace in the Middle East region as a strategic option for the security and prosperity of its people, calling on young people to intensify their scientific endeavors to achieve more progress and success. Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bourainain, the Attorney General, has announced the launch of the Single Interview in Child Sexual Assault Cases Project, which is the first of its kind in the region. The Attorney General stressed the importance of this project and its positive impact on the children's mental health as it aims to unify criminal procedures for both the victim and the defendant in cases of sexual assault involving children. Alas Alistair Long, UK ambassador to Bahrain, stressed the importance of this project in protecting children's rights, praising the vision of the Attorney General over the past years and the efforts of the public prosecution in this field. The public prosecution held a training program on the child questioning mechanism to 869 beneficiaries from a number of concerned authorities such as the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Health and the Child Protection Centre. I'm here today with His Excellency the Attorney General to launch a really important initiative for children, uh, a single interview initiative to make sure that victims of sexual abuse only have to recount their experience once and not multiple times, which can be distressing. Uh, this is so important for the safe execution of justice and I really compliment uh, His Excellency for the leadership of vision he's shown on this. Uh, it is now an initiative that is the first in the region and is one that he can promote to other nations in the GCC and beyond as best practice. Uh, the program aims to recognize uh, criminal dealings with the child at risk and victims of sexual uh, assault that affects the child's personal formation uh, by limiting the child to repeat the incident he experienced and uh, remember the incident inside his memory in order to protect his psychological and mental health. Actually, today we are very delighted to see another achievement that Bahrain has achieved uh, in the field of human rights and promoting protection of human rights, especially of the child. We're here to celebrate the uh, launching of the guideline of um, the hearing of the children who uh, are exposed to assault. A detailed guideline that came out as a product of 
cooperation and um, and work between the different stakeholders, um, definitely the General Prosecution, the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Education and Health, all the stakeholders plus of course the British Embassy now, we have a detailed a professional guideline that all the stakeholders that work in that field can use uh, in their work to further protect the rights of a child. We are very proud of this achievement because in Bahrain, we are not only taking care of uh, uh, the human rights as in, 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 as general, but we're also going to the details of, of every right and working to put mechanisms and, um, and guidelines and projects that ensure that those rights are also protected. And to speak more about this, we have with us on the phone Public Prosecutor Ibrahim Al Fadala. Hello, Mr. Ibrahim. Can you please tell us a little bit about the significance of the launch and how will the guide contribute to children's protection? Thank you very much for providing this opportunity to talk about the one time question of a child program for sexual assault crimes, which was launched today in the presence of His Excellency, the Attorney General Dr. Ali Bin Fadal Bainin and which is considered the first, of, uh, the first of its kind in the region and the Middle East. This program stems from the public prosecution, judicial and social role to protect the best interest of the child, fully understand his needs and provide the appropriate health and psychological atmosphere for his upbringing by organizing the criminal treatment of the child with optimal treatment in sexual assault crimes with a special procedure in the stage of the criminal case and the oversight and supervision of the judiciary, which is to preserve the child's psychological safety, guide him, and reinterrogate him into his family and community environment. This program aims to regulate the criminal treatment of a child in crimes of sexual assault, and to limit his repeated recounting of the facts and events he has experienced, or to recall them urgently in his memory, because this type of crime is socially dangerous and seriously harmful to the child's personal formation. In confirmation of the above, this program comes as a result of concerted national efforts to keep pace with the future vision of the Kingdom of Bahrain, which sets in mind the protection of children and the preservation of their rights, and is a continuation of the comprehensive development project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Megar Protector. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for shedding light on that, Public Prosecutor Ibrahim Al Fadala. Thank you for joining us. The Kingdom of Bahrain celebrates International Children's Day in light of its notable progress in the field of protecting and preserving children's rights guaranteed by the Constitution. Bahrain has taken pioneering steps in the field of child protection through a number of initiatives and procedures, most notably the establishment of the Child Prosecution Center and the Child Help Line to receive reports of children's exposure to physical and psychological abuse, neglect and sexual assault to address these reports accordingly and provide guidance and referral services to relevant authorities if necessary. The Kingdom also formed a juvenile court in which the child's privacy is taken into account in a location independent of the other courts. To achieve the goals of protecting and caring for children and preserving their rights, Bahrain pays considerable attention to the family considering it to be the first basic building block in the sound social upbringing of a child. It also pays considerable attention to children of unknown parentage and children of broken families who are provided with all aspects of integrated care. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Azzayani, hailed the success of the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue in consolidating the diplomacy of peace, tolerance, dialogue and understanding in establishing security, stability and sustainable development as constants. The Minister expressed appreciation for the cooperation between the Ministry and the International Institute for Strategic Studies in organizing the Manama Dialogue and pride in the efforts of all relevant official authorities in the continuous success of the event. Dr. Azzayani commended the diplomatic vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister during his address at the event. The Minister affirmed Bahrain's keenness to continue its initiatives that enhance uh, the principles of dialogue, tolerance and solidarity, emphasizing the respect of international laws to resolve conflicts peacefully, reject violence, religious hatred and racism and non-interference in the internal affairs of states as strategic pillars for achieving security, stability and peaceful coexistence in the world and fulfilling its aspirations for growth and prosperity. Thank <laughs> you. 
The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Works Engineer Sheikh Mish'al bin Mohammed Al Khalifa concluded or conducted an inspection visit to the road work site leading to the housing projects in Sitra, which is part of the strategic projects to provide a solid infrastructure for new housing towns and projects. The Undersecretary noted that the project will connect the housing projects in Sitra to the road network. He stated that the ministry begins uh, the, or began the reclamation work at the end of 2022 as a preliminary stage for main road work and ground services and the completion rate is 60%. The Kingdom of Bahrain succeeded in hosting the 2023 Manama Dialogue Forum in its 19th edition, which is the most important security event that discusses the most pressing issues in the region. More in this report. Over the course of three days, the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue witnessed tremendous success with the participation of world leaders who gathered in one place to unify efforts and overcome challenges. The forum attracted attention not only for discussing the most pressing political and security issues, but its latest sessions touched on the politics for energy security and the future Middle East, which clearly reinforced the importance of this event in supporting the process of progress and development for countries and peoples. So the IISS Manama Security Dialogue is one of the most important events of the year for those of us in the foreign policy community. Uh, I have been coming to it for years. It's uh, an excellent place to hear and, and discuss the most important, the critical issues, the national security issues of the day. It's also a great opportunity to meet with colleagues from across the region, but not just the Middle East, North Africa. People come from Asia, uh, from Europe, from Africa. So it's a great mix and it's a great opportunity to hear, to listen, to speak. The Kingdom's organization of the latest specialized global security summit in the region came to focus on enhancing cooperation and facing challenges and building a common understanding to maintain regional and international security and stability, especially in light of the development the world is witnessing. Well, we're very fortunate to have Bahrain be the host. Bahrain is renowned as a, as a convener, as a place where people from all faiths, from all walks of life, from, uh, from countries around the world come to gather at important events like this. It's really a warm and welcoming environment and a safe and secure environment. I, I think it comes in on the important only time actually, which is a, the world is looking actually forward actually to hear and to listen actually for, from the, the high distinguished uh, participant to this uh, edition and to hear about I mean, their opinion and their perspectives actually from the, I mean, the crisis surrounding uh, us actually, especially I mean, on the, the conflict on Gaza, for example, on, on Ukraine, a question actually, this is actually uh, the platform getting more importance actually, I mean, to sharing and to have this kind of the interaction of the, the ideas to, to be, I mean, to be amongst the, the participants. The Kingdom has a proven record of achievements in attracting major events, as the Kingdom makes great efforts to host this most prominent event in the region every year by providing facilities and activating the role of the Manama Dialogue and its outcomes since the launch of the first edition of the Forum in 2004. In continuation of the series of achievements made in previous editions of the Bahrain Animal Production Show, the sixth edition of the show will be opened this Thursday. More in this report. The sixth edition of the Bahrain Animal Production Show comes after the great success it achieved in attracting international companies and leading expertise in the field of agricultural and animal production. This year's Animal Production Show highlights the programs and projects of the government program that aim for agricultural, marine and animal development to enhance food security and develop the food industry in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The objectives of the Animal Production Show revolve around attracting investments to the Kingdom of Bahrain's food industries, raising the contribution of the agricultural and animal production sector, and strengthening the economy and providing quality opportunities for citizens. In addition to reviewing the latest technological developments and innovations used in developing the agricultural animal production industry. The Bahrain Animal Production Show is a platform to showcase the rare breeds of animals that the Kingdom of Bahrain possesses, which will create greater investment opportunities. The German embassy in Manama has organized a meeting between media representatives and German, Germany's foreign ministry spokesperson for Middle East Affairs, Dr. Dennis Kumitat. More in this report. The meeting between the German diplomat and local media representatives reviewed the outcomes of Manama Dialogue, highlighting the German delegation participation in the event, which it was described as fruitful. 
The meeting discussed the war in Gaza and the international community efforts to solve the crisis by the two-state solution. After the Manama dialogue, I had the chance to talk a little bit more about the German's position uh, with regards to the situation in the Middle East that we see at the moment. The Manama dialogue played a very important role in bringing together decision makers from all over the world. And I'm very grateful for uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain to host this important summit at this crucial time for international diplomacy, bringing bring together people from all around the world on a high level is a diplomatic achievement in itself and that is direly needed in times of these where we see that globally um, opinions are getting more extreme and there are camps that being, are being produced. Um, the best way against this is to talk to each other on different levels, on a high level but also on, on, on different levels. German ambassador to Bahrain, Clemence Hach, pointed out that Bahrain has a convenient power to gather officials, diplomats from East and the West to meet together to share opinion on issues that affect the Middle East. Ambassador Hach commended the speech of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in Manama Dialogue, noting that the situation now required the world's unity. He stressed that in this crucial time, the world needed to sit and discuss the crisis and this what Manama Dialogue has presented. We, we are all seeing the terrible suffering that is going on in Gaza. We all share the resolve to, to contribute to finishing, to, to, to stopping that, that suffering. Um, and um, I think the, the, the main important thing that, that, that came out of this dialogue and, and of the whole of, of the Manama dialogue is really this, uh, th this unity in, in, in the approach that we all have in, in the resolve to stopping the violence, to stopping the suffering, and then working together on a joint solution that will give the Palestinians their legitimate rights uh, based on a two-state solution uh, that, that, that we all want. The ambassador praised Bahrain's efforts to gather government ministers, policy makers, opinion forming and business communities to debate the Middle East's most pressing foreign policy, defense and security challenges. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Fatma Najm. In our international news, His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan has called for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip to protect civilians and secure the delivery of aid to the needy in the Palestinian enclave. During a meeting with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, the Jordanian monarch warned of the aggravating humanitarian conditions in Gaza, calling on the international community to compel Israel to respect international laws and the United Nations Charter. He said Israel's heinous war on Gaza would worsen the situation in the West Bank and Al-Quds, pointing out that the only solution to the Palestinian problem lies in the two-state solution. The ministerial committee charged by the Arab Islamic Summit with international action to stop the war on Gaza, headed by Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah, met in Beijing with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi. During the meeting, the Chinese Foreign Minister affirmed Beijing's support for the call issued by the summit held last week in the Saudi capital Riyadh for a two-state solution in accordance with relevant international resolutions. For his part, the Saudi Foreign Minister stressed the necessity of stopping Israel's war on Gaza, an immediate ceasefire, and the importance of the immediate entry of relief personnel. Saudi Arabia's energy minister, Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman, announced the discovery of two new gas fields in the eastern province and the empty quarter, respectively. A statement issued by the Ministry of Energy stated that Saudi Aramco made the first discovery at the Hanifa Reservoir in the Al Hiran 1 well. The second discovery was made at the Al Mahakek 2 well. Natural gas was also discovered in five other reservoirs and previously discovered fields, which includes the Jalla Reservoir in the Asikra field. The discovery of natural gas reservoirs is expected to complement Aramco's strategic plan to increase gas production by over 50 percent from 2021 levels with the goal of meeting domestic demands by 2030. 
A UAE humanitarian aid convoy set off from Al Arish, Egypt, towards the Rafah border, crossing in preparation for its entry into the Gaza Strip. The aid will be distributed under the UAE's supervision as part of uh, the Gallant Night 3 humanitarian operation launched under the directives of the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, to support the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. The convoy comprises of 13 trucks carrying a total of 272.5 tons of aid. These include 10 trucks carrying 16,800 food packages to support 84,000 people and three trucks carrying 360 tents. To date, the UAE Air Bridge facilitated 49 flights aimed at alleviating the suffering of civilians in the Gaza Strip during these dire circumstances.